Hey everyone, welcome to the sixth and final installment of this year's migration series. If you haven't seen the first five, I recommend pausing this video and watching those first. In part five, I showed you two of the seven lifers that I photographed while filming this week, and as promised, today I will show you the next five. In fact, the final one is also one of the rarest birds I've ever encountered, so please stay tuned until the end. Okay, so let's get started. In last week's episode, I showed you two new lifers that I was able to photograph by getting eye level with the canopy. At this state park, I had no idea that I was about to encounter five more. Okay, so let's talk strategy for just a second. I've got a lot of species that I wanna to shoot today and I don't have a lot of time, so what do I do? Well, this trail that I've selected is comprised of multiple habitats and I'm hoping by varying the habitat, I can maximize the number of species that I see. I'm starting in this field where I might see things like indigo buntings or common yellow throats. And as the light gets harsh, I'm gonna move on to the woods and the river where I might take advantage of the shade and see a few species like prothonotary warblers or vireo. So I hope that pays off and the light is getting a bit harsh, so maybe I should get to it. had the most ridiculously unbelievable sequence of events unfold right here just a few minutes ago. And I'm still trying to process everything that happened, so hopefully I will remember all of the details, but it all started with this shrub over here. So at the end of the field portion of my hike, and I decided I was going to stop and have a snack, and I'm eating some peanuts, and just looking at this shrub and there have been indigo buntings all over this field and they keep landing in the top of these shrubs so I thought it would be nice if one landed in this shrub because this with this forest backdrop it would make for a lovely composition so I'm eating my peanuts and all of a sudden an indigo bunting lands but not in the shrub on a branch in the field right next to the shrub so I grab my camera and I manage to get a shot and I'm looking at it and really excited when all of a sudden a red bird lands in the, the canopy behind the shrub. And so I take a shot, zoom in, and it turns out to be a summer tanager. Now I've never seen a summer tanager in my life. And that makes, I believe, the third lifer for this video, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and so really exciting stuff. I didn't even have time to enjoy the, the lifer when I turn around and get startled by a, a birder, and I'm not making this up, this sounds so made up, a birder who emerges from the, the grass behind me 
to tell me that there has been an orchard oriole flying around in the field right behind me. She was very sweet, by the way. I think she's a regular at this park. And so I spin my camera around and she points out that there's an orchard oriole just a few feet away from me in this shrub. And so I'm gonna put that photo on now. I got a shot. another lifer for me. So that makes four lifers for this video, two of which I've just taken back to back. And again, incredible. So I, I chat with the birder for a few minutes and she goes her way and uh, I'm getting ready to start packing up when in the shrub lands a blue bird. And I thought the, uh, the story is going to be incredible that this all began and ended with an indigo bunting. So I pick up my camera, I take a shot of the blue bird, and as I'm looking at it, I realize it's not an indigo bunting. I think it's a blue grosbeak, which would make five lifers in this video, three of which happened in, in a matter of moments. And before I could put my camera down, there's a blue bird in this shrub again, but the blue grosbeak had flown away and it dawned on me that the indigo bunting had landed in the same spot right behind it. So I, I ended by getting the original intended shot of an indigo bunting in this shrub, and I'm gonna show that to you now as well, but it all came full circle and this is ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. So I don't know if you can hear that on the mic right there. It's a northern bobwhite. It's definitely not a bird I was expecting to hear out here. Very interesting. Okay, I just got another one for the migration challenge. This time an American red start, way up in the treetops. I'll show you now. So spring migration truly is here. Uh, I was just recording a take of myself walking down this path and I heard a call. I'll actually put the video on so you can see the moment I hear it. Uh, but I heard a call that Merlin picked up as a yellow-throated vireo, which would make the sixth lifer for this video. I did manage to get a photo, not a great one, but I got one. Uh, and, and this is a distinct bird from the yellow-throated warbler and the common yellow throat we've already seen in other episodes. Uh, so again, so exciting. I was actually recording a take of this clip to tell you about the Vireo when I was interrupted by a prothonotary warbler that landed right to my left. I can't keep up with all of these birds. Okay, so 
I've been sitting here and thinking about this week's video and frankly just how awesome it has been. Uh, and I don't mean in terms of maybe quality of content, but I've just, I've seen six lifers and that's incredible personally. That's really exciting as well. And I was asking myself, did this have anything to do with anything I did? Or was this just because the weather is better and the bird showed up? I think it's mostly that the weather is better and the bird showed up. And so then that leaves me asking, is there any advice that I could actually give you in this video? And I think there might be. There are two things that I did that dramatically helped me to be in the position to see more birds and get potentially better shots. The first one was to vary my elevation. Sometimes I was low to the ground, sometimes I was high up in the canopy. I think by varying my elevation, it maximized my odds of seeing birds at eye level that I may not have otherwise seen. The second thing I did was to vary my location. I was in a field, I was in the forest, I was at the river, and different migrating birds prefer different habitats. So if I wanna see them all, I have to go to different places. And so I did that too, and that definitely helped. In terms of image quality, one thing I'll add as a bonus that I did was try to get as close to the birds as possible. And I know it's sometimes that's, it's just not easy to do. I hear birds in the canopy all of the time. I can't get close or maybe across the river. I can't get close. But with the example of the indigo bunting, my first shot, I was in a swamp. I was very limited in terms of where I could physically be. And I got a lovely shot, but it was just very far away. Today by the shrub, I was only 10, 12 feet away from the shrub and I was able to get a much more detailed image at the end because I was physically closer. So if you have to choose between a place that is um, more limiting and a place where you can get closer to the birds, you might lean towards a place where you can get physically closer. So outside of that, I didn't really do anything. The birds just showed up and they're everywhere. I mean, honestly, this is what bird photography is all about. The unexpected delight of a new bird, a rare bird, an uncommon bird, just walking, walking right <laughs> across the path. I was on my way back to the car. I, I really had kind of switched my bird brain off for just, just a minute, but yeah, this is what makes bird photography so exciting. You just never know what you're going to see. Wow, what a day. All right, well, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. This migration series experiment was just a ton of fun to make, and I can't thank everyone enough for watching, for subscribing, and for sending so many kind words of encouragement. In fact, as of the time of filming, over 200 of you have already subscribed. Because of all of this support, I'm feeling very motivated to get out there and keep making more videos. For the next few weeks, 
I'll be taking a break from the field to put out a few videos that I've been working on, and in one of them, I'm gonna be talking about Nikon mirrorless cameras and comparing their autofocus systems. In another, I wanna rate and review some of my photos from all six parts of the migration series and share which ones are my favorites. If you have some of your own migration photos from this year that you'd like to share, please send them my way, and I'll leave a link to the contact page of my website down below just to make it easy. And finally, in June, I'm gonna kick off my summer birding series, which are gonna be a lot closer to what you've seen in this migration series. I'll be out in the field, and it'll be photography-based, and I'll be looking for birds that are here in the summer. Okay, well, hey, this concludes the migration series for this year. Stay safe. I'm so thankful that everybody tuned in, and uh, hey, I'll see you in the next one.